What is up everybody, my name is Dr. Mongoose, and I'm not a doctor, but I play one on the internet. Bringing you today, yay or nay, episode 4, on the banning of the FAL by MLG. Now before we get started, I know I haven't been around for a while, school really kicked my ass, that's going to be the short version. A video will come out soon detailing why I have not been around. Um, the gameplay you're seeing today is a 3v4 game of CTF on Express. And uh, this was one of the better games I've played uh, recently. Um, it's coming before the big break. So, you know, who knows if I'm actually doing this well when I come back to play, but, you know, that's beside the point. The meat of the video, as you know, is we're going to be focusing on MLG and their banning of the FAL. Now, the FAL has been a really hot-button weapon, and a, uh, it's been a hot-button issue when it comes to competitive Call of Duty and the overall Call of Duty community in general because of how powerful the gun is and uh, the, you know, severe lack of limitations, I suppose some people could say, and will say, um, when it comes to use of the gun versus, you know, like, ease of use of the gun versus how powerful it can be, what with select fire and all the different attachments you can throw on it. Now, I'm going to focus this video on a couple of parts, one being, you know, my actual opinion of the weapon, two being why I think MLG did it, and third being you know, whether or not that was the way to go about it, essentially, you know, the, the yay or nay part of this whole, you know, video series. Now, first being, you know, the FAL in general. I do not believe the FAL is overpowered. Um, that is oftentimes, you know, a not-so-popular opinion when it comes to Call of Duty or the competitive community, but um, the FAL, I feel, is not overpowered because in its native state, which is, you know, where it is actually at its most powerful, which is, you know, one, you know, pull the trigger once, one shot. It is difficult to use. You have to have a good trigger finger. You have to be someone who can control their aim while at the same time controlling a rapid trigger. You have to be able to basically be able to do a multitude of different things at once. And for that, for, you know, for your ability to do that, for your skill in that regard, you get to, you know, you get a very powerful weapon. Now, I find that to not at all be overpowered. If you're good enough to use it, you should be able to use it. And if you're not good enough to use it, then, you know, you have to either figure out a way to use it, you train yourself, or you exploit the weaknesses of it, you know, which is that it doesn't have a very good hip fire up close. You need to be, you need to, if you don't hit your first couple shots, then you are at a disadvantage. If your aim is off or, you know, again, if you force a mistake, then you're going to be the one ahead of it because any other weapon will beat it as long as you are playing well, which is essentially the case for any sort of competitive shooter is that if you play better than the other person, regardless of their weapon, regardless of what happens, you should be the one to, you know, win the fight or do better than them. Now, a lot of the complaints that stem from the FAL is... A big portion of it comes from the fact that it does have a couple, uh, it does have a big glitch and a big problem, which is that the fire rate for when you're firing, you know, single shot is a fixed, is a fixed thing in game, whereas you will be able to, you know, you'll be able to fire it so fast and if it was running at full auto, which means that because there's a select fire attachment, um, the... Treyarch built it so that the gun fires at a certain rate of fire if you were to pull if you were to um use the gun with a select fire attachment. It's the same thing with the SWAT, same thing with the M8. You can't fire it past a certain past a certain point where um where it would be at full auto. However, the FAL has a glitch in the sense because it is a single fire weapon that if you are using something like a you know a scuff controller or a modded controller where it will simulate faster trigger pulls is you'll actually get a rate of fire that's faster than the game intends you to be able to fire it at. So you can actually fire it at faster than I believe the rate of fire, the max rate of fire is 425. Um, don't quote me on that though, but you'll basically be firing faster than your uh, maximum rate of fire, which means that you get an advantage on top of that. Now that you can't act, I don't know, I'm pretty certain that if you're not using, you know, say a controller that has some sort of mod, whether it's the hair triggers of the scuff, or it is, you know, some sort of modded controller that gives you more trigger pulls, you know, when you click in the, click in the trigger, um, I'm pretty sure you can't actually get that if you're just using the, uh, a regular trigger. Um, if, you know, some people, I know people who have a really very fast trigger finger, but even they're not getting the speeds that you see some of these people getting. So, for me, this seems to be 
not an issue with the gun itself. Well, it's an issue with the gun itself in that there are two ways to fix this. One is to, at least for competitive, uh, for competitive players, is you ban these sorts of controllers. You ban scuff controllers, you ban these controllers that have these sorts of mods, which is um, for MLG and most competitive leagues, only scuff controllers. You remove those or any controller that has some sort of mod from competitive play. You make that, you can't use that. The second thing would be, obviously, is you get Treyarch to patch it so that the gun can't fire beyond 425, because this, again, it is it is a glitch. It's something that should be able to be patched fairly easily, seeing as they do have a lot of weapon balancing consistently. Now, MLG, the way they went about it, is obviously they decided to ban the gun versus banning the controller, and I'll get into that in, you know, just a moment, but first I want to focus on, you know, why people don't like the gun and I don't think they like the gun and I think that it's an unfair sort of feeling towards the gun is that you know and I'm not gonna be the kind of person that says oh you know you know be better or you know just do better or you're bad no I, the gun it is very powerful and when it first came out I would say that it was very overpowered especially when combined with select fire however since it's been patched since Treyarch has taken the time to tool it back to make it as such where it is now meant to be used in its native state um, because if you use it with select fire I've, I've used it with select I use it with select fire then I've used it with select fire now it is nowhere near as powerful as it once is and so a lot of people are giving this gun a very bad rap because it is a gun that all they're remembering is oh I remember when this gun was super overpowered at the beginning of the game's life cycle and that's not the case anymore and we can't you know we can't ju make decisions based around things that once were or oh I remember when this was you know that way otherwise there's you know you're not gonna get any growth when it comes to the game itself so was the FAL overpowered? Yes, at one point it was. Does that mean the gun needs to be banned now? No, the gun needs to have a final bit of fixing. Or the leagues themselves have to, you know, man up, recognize and say, okay, we're not going to allow this glitch to um, proliferate, which is that they would have to then ban um, modded controllers. And modded controllers themselves are a big, you know, dividing issue when it comes to the uh, competitive Call of Duty community to begin with. Um, and that's a video completely unto itself, but the way MLG went about it is that they have banned the FAL for Online Qualifier 4, and um, the way that they've worked things is that generally, whatever the rules for an Online Qualifier are, that is what's going to carry over to the event. So when we see the rules for Online Qualifier uh, 4, whatever you know that final rule set is, it's probably going to be the rule set for the um, actual tournament itself. Now. There has been a big upcry because online qualifier three, you can still use the FAL. Um, obviously, a smart player wouldn't because they're you know getting good or preparing with a gun that wouldn't uh, they wouldn't be able to play with. But that's a whole different thing. But they're basically changing the rules midway through, and they're not making everyone play by the same rules. It's kind of like how they banned uh, dual wield. Uh, they banned dual wield at uh, the start of the online qualifiers, and then they took to banning the cap during the second qualifier while there were still people who possibly won games or lost games because they were or they weren't using the cap the single cap 40 um, it's the same thing with people who might have won or lost games and qualifiers because they were using dual BRs and so it begs the question of like okay well how far do we you know judge or how far do we base um, decisions how far do we go when it comes to fixing or tweaking things and where do we apply that I mean this is a th this is a decision that's coming down in the middle of the qualifier like things had just started getting thing I think it was the first it was like maybe a couple days after the first day of qualifier 3 play that they decided to make this ban and so it's not like you could go back and say okay well it, it, you can probably replay that first day of qualifier and not lose too much time or even if you know even Assuming some people might have lost or might have won because they were using the FAL, it's probably safe to say most people who were better won. And you can probably ban the FAL for Qualifier 3 and you'd be fine with it, but we're getting two different rule sets for getting a seed in, um, in the, in, at MLG Anaheim. And so we end up with some people might be able to get in on the fact that they're using a banned weapon for this last little bit and they can you know, they're good enough with another weapon, they can switch over later. So, the way MLG went about this really, really 
doesn't it really does not help um, the co the competitive community as a whole because what we're end up happening is we're going to potentially see I'm not saying this is you know what the, this is not the case this is not what's going to happen but we have the potential of some teams getting in or some teams being able to take advantage of this and they might do better they might do worse but it we have an uneven playing field and that is a big no-no when it comes to competitive Call of Duty now how they could have done this properly is that instead of actually banning the weapon which again I will state over and over again in its native state I do not find to be that over I do not find to be overpowered is you go about banning modded controllers now in an online qualifier situation there's really no way for you to prove that um, outside of if you're an expert at looking at footage but at a tournament you ban scuff controllers you ban you know onzas or whatever it is that people use you don't allow those controllers into a into the competitive um, environment because it means that you it means that you're addressing a problem it means that you're addressing a problem without actually you know changing the game because Again, these players, they're exploiting a glitch that hasn't been addressed, which I don't have a problem with. That'd be like saying, oh, we're going to ban BXRs and double shots in Halo 2. I don't have a problem with glitches. Ex I don't have a problem with glitches existing as long as everyone has access to them. If everyone could get this glitch, if everyone could take advantage of this glitch, but glitch without a modded controller, there would be no issue, I think. But the fact is that you have to take outside money, you have to do things that... You know, you might not have access to the money to buy a scuff controller. You might not have access to the funds to, you know, get um, one of these uh, controllers needed to make this uh, possible. Then you have an uneven playing field that you're not going to address. Um, I also understand why they're not going to do this because it would take a very long time to check every single controller that goes through it. Every referee would have to check every single controller at every station. Games would be delayed. You can't, you know... With, when it comes to you know running a tournament, you have to have a certain amount of time between games. You want to be able to run things as smoothly and quickly as possible. But again, you do have it, it comes it comes down to whether or not okay, are you willing to sacrifice some sort of you know the competitive side of things, or you're willing to sacrifice uh, potential competitive matchups? Because the FAL watching you know an FAL battle, watching two guys who are very good with this gun, it, they can do a lot of work with it. Clayster is a great example of this in that uh, game of Raid Hardpoint at Dallas. Um, Parasite, another perfect example. People who are very skilled with this weapon, they put on great shows. But at the same time, you know, how much of that skill is their controller? How much of that skill is them? I mean, obviously, not at all taking away anything from them. Uh, Clayster skill, Parasite skill, anyone who's good with an FAL, it's not just because, oh, they're using a con modded controller. No, no, that's not the case at all. But it is, you know... It is about striking the balance between okay, or am I going to am I going to ban a control? Am I going to allow a weapon that most of the community is not too happy with? Which, again, that I that I suppose is kind of a video for another time. But is it banning a weapon most of the community is not happy with, or is it just trying to do a quick fix to a problem? On a, for me, I give this to nay. Nay, all the way. MLG should have tried to find a way to work in some sort of controller ban. They should have. You know, maybe try to pre try to push for Treyarch to get a fix going. Anything but you know banning a weapon. You know, removing something from the game, banning something is always your last resort. And there were other options here. You don't want to affect how the game plays as much as possible. That is, you know, your biggest thing. So this big nay from me. You FAL should not be banned. It should you know receive some sort of fix. It should receive uh, some sort of tweak. MLG or tournament competitors, they should ban these controllers. Uh, you should not be allowed to, you know, you shouldn't be messing with the game, especially mid qualifier, especially with the uh, tournament coming up very, very soon, within a month. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave your comments what you think uh, about the ban or what you, your guys' opinion are. As always, my name is Dr. Mongoose. Please watch two of my videos and call me in the morning. Y'all have a nice day.